Okay, welcome to another Friday Night Disaster Report. We're actually working on this on Thursday night because we have some time. And, uh, we're taking some time anyways. Another busy week in the shop, fixing all kinds of stuff. Uh, everything from intake manifolds to tires to you name it. But anyways, uh, it'll be another busy day tomorrow. We'll talk about snowstorm coming in, but it's been pretty good this week. Sunshine every day and almost up to freezing. So the snow is going away. Anyways, uh, we're going to take you for a little shop tour. Uh, some of you probably aren't familiar with the equipment that we got here, so we'll do a little overview on that and uh, kind of an introduction to the equipment uh, shop tour, I guess. So, anyways, we'll take you for a little walk about here. So, this is all in its natural state. As you can see, we got. Uh, K.O. Lee surface grinder and uh, being used as a part shelf most of the time because it doesn't get much use around here and let's see uh, parts department over there coffee area come back around here we've got uh, sunshine in the window pretty good is what we got we got a 50 ton press there and uh, bought it new a few years ago and I'll tell you it's uh, it does a job but it's not much of a machine but uh, I always said if I was gonna buy a press it was gonna be at least a 50 tonner so yeah I got 50 tonner but it might as well be a 20 ton whatever but uh, that does attract the press of stuff we've got a drill press an old 1979 Omni about a, what is it, 12 speed, 16 inch, something like that, with a 5 inch chuck on it, and uh, for our light duty drilling, and uh, it's a stand up one, not a bench top. Got a little anvil there. It's uh, well, it's one of them Princess Auto toys, but it's okay for whacking on once in a while if you're not gonna hit anything too hard. And we got a bunch of our machine shop tools there, tap wrenches, engine tools, micrometers on the top shelf with a blanket over them to keep most of the dust off. It's also our coat rack. And uh, transfer magnets down the bottom and uh, some cutters and end mills and stuff. And we've got the uh, big Wilson here. It's kind of washed out. But anyways, it's a 17 swing and a 46 between centers. Goes from 39 RPM up to 716 RPM in about, I don't know, 8 speeds. Uh, does a pretty good job, fairly accurate. We've got a 4 jaw on there now. We've also got a 3 jaw for it. And about a, I'd say about a 9 inch, 10 inch 3 jaw. And it's got a, about a 14 inch face plate, about a 29 inch face plate. It's got a gap in the bed, so you can swing about uh, 30 inches actually uh, in the gap. We've also got a steady rest for it, and there's a follow rest back behind us. And it does have a taper attachment, only it's been uh, broke a couple of times, and we don't have it all fixed up to put back on, and we never have. It was like that when we bought the lathe, and uh, so of course this stuff's all three phase. And our little south bend, that's a 14 and a half inch, and I would say if we had a tailstock for it, which we don't, we've got a steady rest but no tailstock. It's probably the most 24 inches. It's fairly short, but we want to get that going for our uh, basically second operation lathe when we're doing three jaw stuff. It's got a pretty good, uh, I think it's a Cushman chuck on there. Uh, removable jaws and it's uh, pretty good. So that'll be handy when we get it going again. We had to take it apart because the underdrive here, that shaft that you see there is one we made and that's actually 4140. It's really hard. I think the shaft that was in there originally was probably 12L14, something fairly soft. Uh, and it was wore all two pieces these ones actually run the uh, use a housing cast iron housing as a bushing 
with felts uh, and uh, and a ring on the felt uh, to hold it in place. And I don't think anybody ever oiled the thing for years and years. You can see there's oil cups on it there. And uh, but of course it's in the in the cabinet in the underdrive. And uh, I don't think anybody even realized there was oil supposed to be put in it. And the uh, cross slide and the compound both have about a hundred thousandths uh, backlash. It's exceptional. The the dials actually come away from their faces. That's how far uh, how much backlash does. So we actually ordered up a couple of uh, new nuts off of eBay, and we'll probably make our own new shafts because I imagine if the nuts are wore that bad, the shafts are too. And we'll try to get this one fairly tight. We aren't going for any high precision stuff. Most of the stuff we work on around here is a, you know, five or ten thousandths tolerance, and we usually keep our tolerances under a thousandths. But uh, most of the stuff we work on is make it to fit. Uh, we aren't building off of uh, drawings very often, and when we do, well, we just creep up on stuff and chase it to the size we want. And if we got to file a little bit, we file. Anyways, that's enough about the lathes. We got our Elliott 10M shaper here, and uh, it hasn't seen much uh, activity lately. It hasn't got cleaned off much lately either. Uh, works pretty good. Uh, it's been in a couple of videos a while back, uh, doing some work, uh, three phase as well, and uh, use it mostly well internal keyways and uh, dovetails stuff like that. Uh, is mo you really the only customer work I do with it? Sometimes I just play with it for my own entertainment because there's nothing like sitting there and mesmerized by a shaper going back and forth. And uh, then we've been working on the mill here or with the mill uh, last few days and uh, doing a lot with it. It's a Brown and Sharp number two plane light mill. Read that there. So I don't know. It's probably about the a little bit smaller, maybe than the Kearney and Trekker number two. Uh, works pretty good. Uh, it's got a universal head that I got to rebuild because it's still got all the old grease and everything in there. I got to start on it, but I got to finish it up. And of course, we got the overarms there. We got actually two uh, supports here. Uh, but the oilers don't work in either one, so I just oil the bushing before I put her on, and away we go. And then we got arbors. We got to get more organized. We're putting up more shelves all the time, but we got their mill stuff here in this little toolbox, a lot of it. And we got tool holders there. We've got some here that uh, that we actually made ourselves. We've got one around here that uh, does one inch arbors. I don't know where it went to. Uh, we made this one a custom one to run that. That's about a four inch face mill there and we made our own arbor to uh, to run it. It actually works pretty good. We use that on a lot of that uh, John Deere uh, stuff that we were doing. And uh, then of course we got a seven eighths and a one inch and an uh, inch and a quarter and an inch and a half arbors. Uh, the one inch one is about 20 in, 21 or 22 inches long, which sounds pretty long, but actually it ain't bad because it gives you some clearance so you can see what you're doing. And uh, so as you can tell, we kind of got stuff stacked around everywhere instead of being where it's supposed to be. We got a, uh, what is that? It's an Ellis dividing head with one plate on it, and we need to set up a chuck or something on it. And uh, it's all there, uh, but we got to get more dividing plates for it. And uh, then we got because we got gears to make for the for the big drill press. So that's pretty much everything. We got another shelf of, of uh, reamers and drill bits and uh, dogs up to I think four and a half or five inch uh, for doing stuff between centers. And uh, then we got our portable bench here that we, uh, well, sometimes I work at keeping it clean, sometimes I just leave it in its natural state. 
And we got the little drill press down here, a little bench top one that uh, uh, we never really use. But uh, it sits there. Of course, parts washer there. And uh, office area over there. It's a horrible mess. And then uh, automotive shop's got all autom automotive stuff in it. Uh, you know, four post hoist, two post hoist that we got to actually redo a piece of the floor because it uh, concrete's really bad here. Uh, headlight aimer there. Uh, alignment machine that is not working right now. Uh, all the regular stuff you see. And then uh, down here we got the tire machine and balancer, furnace, whatever. And we've got the big uh, spool drive here for our uh, big MIG welder. This, in case anybody is wondering, is an S54E spool drive. And I don't know how big of a spool you can put on there, but it's on its lowest position right now to feed the feed rollers. And it can go, what, four inches higher, almost, to center the spool. So, uh, yeah, she'll feed some big, uh, some big stuff there. And uh, why isn't this one? There we go. And we got a little Miller buzz box there, 225. I'm going to try some uh, AC TIG with it just to see what happens. And then we got the big stuff here. Of course, the light shining in the windows there. As you can see, it's a Delta Welt 651 power source for the spool drive. And an Acklands, which of course is a Miller. And it is, if we can get down here and look, it's a. Uh, 300 and it goes to 350 amps I think they call it a yeah it's a DR DR 300 DC welder and uh, always I'll tell you she'll burn some rods nice smooth machine and uh, we got another one out back as a backup it was wired for 460 and we switched it over to the 208 but it doesn't want to work on 208 and then we've got uh, this is the face of the big Delta Weld 651 and you can see DC volts will go to 100 there and DC ampers the gauge goes to 800 now I don't know how far it'll actually go in real life but we can go to 48 volts on the on the knob and for uh, voltages, we're on 208, which means it'll it'll draw 118 amps on 200 and 208 volts. So uh, we don't plan on ever going that high, but we can only get a 90 amp breaker as big a breaker as we can get for our panel, and we've got 200 amps coming in here, 208 three phase, and then we've got the big compressor there. That's a uh, Atlas Copco, uh, seven and a half horsepower uh, compound V, uh, two cylinder twin uh, uh, compound compressor, high, low pressure and high pressure. And we got a plasma cutter here, um, what's it, uh, Thermal Dynamics, uh, 75 amp plasma cutter. Works pretty good. Saves us a lot on our oxyacetylene, I'll tell you that much. So anyways, that uh, we're getting the big MIG. We were, <laughs> we're two years behind getting it set up from when we wanted to because of course when the shop got robbed the last time they decided they had to take all my welding cables and then they also proceeded to whatever they didn't take they chopped into three or four pieces. Just uh, being idiots I guess. So we had to put a new, we had to shorten up our stinger about a foot and a half, two feet and uh, put a new liner in it. They bugger that all up. And then of course we can get a new whole new stinger, but well, only when we can afford it. And then of course we had to buy all new cable and new hoses. Uh, they cut off the power control cable, the four core wire, of course, of course they're copper thieves. So anything with copper in it. They took all the double lock cable 
and they took all the cables off the DC welder so I had to buy more cable for it. Went from having a hundred feet of, of uh, stinger and probably 50 or 60 feet of ground. Now I'm down to 50 feet of stinger and 25 feet of ground. And uh, so yeah, that's not cheap to replace, but anyways, we're working away and uh, two years later, we're just got to put a bottle of gas on her and uh, we'll be back in operation, I guess. And then of course, we got the big drill press. It's also being used as a counter table when it's not in use. And I know the lighting isn't the best. But it's a Sibley, uh, and uh, it was set up with, it's got its own motor drive on it, uh, on the base, cast into the base, it's a place for a motor, and it's got a five horsepower on it. Same drill press as uh, Keith Fenner has, actually. And uh, the difference is, this has the original table on it that's actually set up for flood coolant. Uh, got the got the tray on it. The T slots are were drilled up and and uh, broke up pretty bad. So we've welded them up to some extent. We still got to do a bit more on it, but it's plenty usable. We've also got to rebuild all the gears, the gearbox. This thing is set outside for twenty or thirty years, and uh, the gears and the gearbox for the power drive were uh, rusted away to nothing. And so we got to rebuild a whole bunch of that. And uh, anyways, that's the, the most of the equipment in the shop anyways. We don't have to go through every little drawer and everything. And we got a little bench here that we keep a lot of our welding stuff on, kind of in the middle of the shop. And uh, anyways, that'll be the report for Friday night disaster report for this week. And... Uh, we're gonna try to get some machining. We've been doing some interesting machining, but we haven't got uh, haven't uh, got anything uh, on video lately. But anyways, we'll show you these. We made these up for uh, some airplane servicing tools for a company in Calgary, Alberta. Those were for adjusting some of the controls. This is for doing the the wheel nuts wheel bearing nuts on it and then this with the lanyard on it and the whole bit this nut here threads off with the knurl on it here and that slides in through a bearing on some of the pivots of the airplane and you take the bolt out of the pivot and you slide this in and you grease in here and it comes out through here and goes through the inner race of the bearing as I understand it and when you thread the this nut on of course it captures it on the bearing and uh, greases the bearing and then you take this out put your bolt back in and torque it and or lock wire whatever the spec is on it and you have your airplane service for another six months or a year or whatever the service interval is so we machined all this stuff just from round stock and flat stock and whatever that uh, that's just a socket whole Chinese socket that I had laying around so we cut it off machined it down and uh, and then heated the this part up to about 400 degrees and then press that in it was still a press fit just a light press fit and uh, once it cooled off we put 50 pounds of torque on her and she ain't moved so I don't think we have to weld it because uh, of course wheel bearings don't take any torque so that was one little project that we did. We finished up this week. We've been working on and off and on for a while. But anyways, we'll wrap it up with that. And uh, hopefully uh, get another video out for next week.